Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking all about the magical properties of a strophalite. Before I get into that, I just wanted to say, good thing I have my grape agate here, because I just recorded probably about 20 minutes of me yapping uh, on and on about a strophalite, and then realized when I downloaded the video that my microphone was turned off. So that's really, yeah not great so good thing this was here to help dispel the anger if you want to watch this uh, video from last week talks all about great uh, great agate and how to use it to be calm and dispel anger so thank god that was here because i was ready to lose it so <laughs> all right so let's get to this video this is all about astrophilite astrophilite if you translate the word astrophilite, which is, it comes from a uh, Greek word. So, astrophilite, astron means star, phylon means leaf. So, it's called star leaf in Greek. So, I kind of see the leaf thing. Maybe I could kind of see where that comes from, but I don't know. Pretty cool, though. It's fun to see where words are derived from, but astrophilite is beautiful. And just like all other crystals, well, this one's a mineral. I love them in their raw form, like this. And you can see all those beautiful copper flashes. And this is the polished form. And if you kind of flick it here into the light you could see those same kind of beautiful sprays where it'll just kind of pop out at you and you can kind of see them there flashing and very beautiful material kind of reminds me of the night sky which is perfect for this so i would say there's three main things with astrophilite so the very first one is astral projection, astral travel. So similar to lucid dreaming, astral travel is when you're going to basically have an out-of-body experience. Um, astral travel is difficult. So astral travel, I would definitely recommend if you're going to try to have an out-of-body experience, go for lucid dreaming. I mean, astral travel in itself is tricky. It's a conscious projection of leaving your body. So think of, did you ever see the movie Doctor Strange when he has an astral projection? He just kind of pops right out of his body and he's floating around at a various multiverse and, you know, shooting through the, the cosmos. Yes, that's the equivalent of it, but it's not that easy. So the only time I was successful in astral travel, which is conscious, consciously leaving your body, is when I was a kid. And I didn't even really mean to do it. I didn't know what was going on. And you just kind of, I would, I remember laying in my bed and I was just kind of between wake and sleep and whoosh, you just, I just flew away and you're thinking what on earth immediate fear rushes in you into me. And then whoosh, I'm right back to my body. And I've had a couple of those, uh, instances where I tried then because I was mesmerized by astral travel, reading books and trying to do this deliberately on cue and, when you're a kid, it comes a lot easier. You have the energy to work with. And especially when you're young, younger, when you're middle age and, and whatever else, it's it, it gets harder and harder as you progress. Uh, honestly, I would try to stick with lucid dreaming unless you're really going to put the time in. You need to raise quite a bit of energy to astral project. Um, one thing I will say, if you're adamant on trying to astral project, do it first thing in the morning when you have all your energy, which 
that's what sleep is. You're going to be revitalized. All that divine energy just soaked up in all your chakras and everything. As soon as you wake up, that's your best bet to have an astral projection. That's that's it. Like when, when you're, most people try to do it right before they go to bed. Worst time to try to astral project because you're probably just going to fall asleep. Mostly people just fall asleep and then they give it up. So it is difficult. It's something that would you'd have to put a lot of time and, and there's tons of techniques out there um, to try to get into that. But it is very difficult. Um, other people commonly, when you're younger, you could have astral projections easier or when you're older. And a lot of times that happens when you're elderly and, you know, I hate to say it's kind of like being prepped for when you do permanently leave your body and it a lot of older people will experience astral projections out of body experiences uh, right before they pass and though you know obviously that's not the way you want to have one so <laughs> go for it uh, there's tons of books on it but you need to, you need to raise quite a bit of energy to consciously project and leave your body but if, if you're geared up to that, astrophilite can definitely help. Um, and it can also protect you on your journeys as well. Because you're going to want something for protection. Um, I also would recommend programming some pieces of quartz to help with the amplification of energy. And program them to kind of what you are looking to do. And maybe a piece of black tourmaline to further protect you from anything negative while you're outside the body so again perfect if you want to work with astrophilite for that reason i'm not trying to talk you away from astral projection but it is very difficult and it's a skill that could take years to master and even then possibly it can never happen so lucid dreaming that's when you kind of just go to sleep and then you pop awake in the dream and you're like, where am I? And then you realize you're dreaming and you're totally awake. That's a little more feasible. And there's different crystals and minerals for that as well, which I'll get into in uh, other videos. But specifically, if you're talking astrophilite, astral projection, this is a go-to if you're trying to do that. Uh, the next thing, there's three things, as I said. The second one is what I use it for, and that's pulling in divine knowledge. Now, you're not going to just hold a piece of this and pull in the knowledge, but it is fantastic in terms of using with your crown chakra and your third eye chakra. This is meant to be a crown chakra mineral, and it completely will connect you with the divine, with the cosmos, universe, Anything you want to say like that it is going to pull in divine energy and it's going to open you up to what you'll perceive as spiritual experiences, knowledge um, from from literally the the universe is going to give you an open. It's going to open up that crown chakra and tr as you work with it, it's going to trickle down. This has the potential to restructure your entire chakra system from the top down very powerful very high vibrational and it can open up your crown chakra and just work its way through every single chakra and uh, allow that universal energy to flow through you and it is amazing for pulling in that divine connection which can just transform your entire internal vibration. And be prepared when you're starting to connect to higher realms because you're going to increase that flow of energy in the body and things are going to change for you going forward. And if you keep open to that and keep working with this, you're going to get floods of information. Maybe you won't know what to do with them at first, but you keep working with this, you absolutely will. You'll get a ton of information. So 
The third thing is if you want to release old programming and patterns that are stuck to help, they're just causing you not to progress, whether it be spiritual, physically, whatever the case may be, this will help you to get rid of those and bust up all that negative junk patterns. Like, and what I mean by that is this negative patterns, I'm talking, it's tough for people to just tell you this, but maybe you're arrogant. Maybe you're dishonest. Maybe you're impulsive. Maybe you're insensitive. And a lot of people aren't going to just come up to you and say, hey, you're a jackass. You need to work on some, you know, you're not very sensitive. They're just going to ignore it and probably ignore you. But this stone is going to help you to first realize what is wrong and then allow you to break up those negative patterns. And a lot of times you get stuck in those, even laziness. You get stuck in a certain pattern you come home, you sit in a certain chair, you watch a certain program, you just can't move. And if it allows you to break from that, like, or you're just going to act like a jackass. <laughs> and, you know, maybe you're dishonest, maybe you're arrogant. And it's going to help bust up those negative patterns and help you move forward, bring it to the forefront. So first you understand what's going on. And then if you accept it, this will help to spell it. So those are the top three in terms of this. Um, like I said earlier, it cleanses and balances all chakras. Mainly, it's a crown or third eye chakra. If you work with this and meditate with it, lay a, a nice polished little palm stone on your, your third eye and meditate with it, whether you wear it as jewelry. I mean, the, I would like, you know, if you get jewelry and... and if you're committed to working with this for a while, work with each crystal for, you know, a month. Maybe some of them won't work for you at all. But this is a definite high vibrational one. I think you would see some definite changes. And it's cool because, similar to the Doctor Strange stuff, you're going to get this divine information. You might not even know what it is or what it means. or And eventually you're going to be able to decipher it and understand it. It's a very spiritual stone and very high vibrational. And it's the stone of the self, the stone of change. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I would definitely, before you work with this, cleanse it. This is one, it doesn't hold tons of negative energy, um, but I would recommend cleansing it, running it under some water, Whatever you want to do, uh, everybody does something a little different to cleanse a crystal. I just use faucet water and run it under for maybe 10 seconds, and it's going to pull out all that energy and just get rid of it. Running water is known to get rid of all that. So great to work with, easy to work with, but you're going to want to kind of progress with it and keep using it, whether you use it on your crown chakra hold it in your hand, whatever the case may be. Just consistently keep working with it, and you're going to start to see some different things change and different things coming in um, in terms of divine information. And especially when it starts opening your crown chakra, you'll have some really cool experiences. So definitely recommend astrophilite. Another thing is this guy over here. I don't know if you saw this. This, you might be thinking, oh, here's some more astrophilite. Nope, this is Numite. And the way to tell them apart, very difficult. So if you're looking at two pocket stones, Numite, think of it more as the night sky with individual points of flash, as opposed to astrophilite. It has that spray, almost like a firework, like a spray pattern. So just in case something isn't labeled in your connection, it is very difficult to, com to confuse Numite with Astrophilite because they do look similar. But that, I think, covers pretty much everything. Um, 
absolutely wonderful uh, mineral to work with, and they're very beautiful to have in your collection, especially, in my opinion, the raw, which is my favorite, just gorgeous. I mean, about, I would say these are probably about the $50 range, $40, $50 range. I know some of the larger spheres can get pretty pricey, but I do have in my shop, I do carry some of the palm stones. I forget how much I even charge for them, not much, but some of them have good flash, other ones don't. Still going to work for you, still going to be able to use it and, and, and uh, connect with it and with all those metaphysical properties. But another thing I am planning on doing is I'm going to start making some microscope videos. I was thinking about it, and I bought a really high-powered microscope. So, already I've been playing around with this, and it's pretty awesome. I mean, you put specimens underneath that microscope and zoom in. It is amazing, and it's like another world. So, I think I'm going to probably bring some of that to you guys, just so you could see up close how crazy some of these minerals and crystal formations are. It is another world when you're zoomed in on something with a high-powered microscope. I've been doing this just for fun for the past uh, couple weeks now, and it, it is really cool. So I look forward to bringing some, some of those videos to you guys as well. Also, if you have any questions, comments, experiences, if you wanted to add some things about astral travel, lucid dreaming, whatever the case may be, feel free to mention it and drop anything in the comments. And, and I love this stuff. I could talk about this stuff all day. I mean, I love crystals. I love minerals. I love fossils. I, I literally could talk about this stuff all day. So I'd be happy to discuss anything with you guys in the comments. And that's about it for this week. I'll see you guys next week.